Hey, so I'm Rob. Uh, this is a variable frequency drive setup that I created for this uh, vibrating motor. Um, it's something you'd use for the compaction of stiff liquids like concrete or uh, soap making or pretty much resin. It would also help get bubbles out of resin um, without requiring a vacuum chamber. Wouldn't necessarily do a perfect job, but it would do a lot better than just sitting there waiting for the bubbles to come up. Um, it makes fluids act like they have a much lower viscosity, which is pretty cool. Uh, the way this thing works overall is there's a 120 volts coming in here. Um, I have this DIN rail mounted with these terminals over here, but the power very first thing comes in to this e-stop. So I actually know that everything in here is pretty safe to touch. I'm not going to touch it to test it because there's no reason to do that. But the only dangerous part would be right here, which is why that's been potted down. So goes through a circuit breaker and hits this VFD, which stands for variable frequency drive. Um, when you have an induction motor, you can't just turn down the voltage. That will not cause the motor to slow down. It will for a little bit, and then it will cause it to slip and burn up. What you need instead is you need a different frequency than the standard 60 hertz in order to speed up or slow it down. Uh, so the way this thing does, is it, does it is it takes the 120 volts line in, converts it to something like 60 volts DC, and then basically rebuilds the sine wave. Um, but actually, it comes out in three phases. So we have our ground here, which is going back to the ground bus bar, which I have here, uh, which connects to the enclosure, connects to um, the outlet's ground, and ultimately connects up to the motor. So everything in here is grounded. The VFD itself is grounded. Um, this device is as safe as I can make it. Um, so this results in a 240 volt three phase power output. I can plug it in. In general, this thing is not safe uh, once the power's been turned on when it's open. Um, there's really just no way to guarantee that. So I've turned it on. Just real quick, I'll show. So the VFD comes alive. Um, and VFDs can be programmed to use external controls. So we could absolutely could run it from right here with these buttons. Um, but I've changed the settings so that instead it listens to this external potentiometer to tell it what frequency to run at. And then this button must be held down for power to output. So this is about as slow as it goes and it's not happy at all. Let's speed it up. And I don't have it overdriving, but you can. You can actually make it go faster than the rate of speed. Uh, that's not something you want to do long term, so I didn't include the setting. Uh, but what's pretty cool is turn it up i can actually turn it down while it's still on or of course you could say this setting works for me and it just boots straight there and stops there let go stops uh, it's just marked one to 100 it's basically how the whole thing works e stop works exactly how you expect you press the button power goes away um, vfd takes a second to run out of power but of course if you were outputting to this thing then it immediately dies there's no way it can support that off its internal capacitors right very cool and what have you what have you used it for? Uh, I've used it for some concrete projects at home. Uh, there's something called a tetrapod, which is a kind of weird looking uh, concrete structure that they use for breaking uh, breaking waves on uh, shorelines. And so I've made a mini one of those. It came out pretty terribly. Uh, I'd like to do better, but my plan right now is maybe to set up some simple molds to make some large planters, as those can be pretty expensive. That would be pretty easy overall with something like this. Very cool. Great. Well, thanks for telling us all about it.